What about this up down? Let's hear that. Okay, let's try it with two octave range available. That's 24 semitones, 2 times 12. I'll type that in, 24. There we go. With the up down button selected, that's this one, we'll get this. So it's going root 1, 2, 1, root 1, 2, 1, root, and back again. So it, again, it doesn't resolve. Root 1, 2, 1, root 1, 2, 1, root 1, 2, 1. But um, I can get that to resolve uh, by increase because what's happening is when it's going up down, it doesn't play the top note twice, it plays root. One, two, and it's two octave range, yeah. So it's now on this root one, two. Here at this step, it's reached the top, the second octave, and it's going to come down now. So it'll play one, the first octave on here, and then the root here. So it goes root one, two, one, root, yeah. If I want this pattern to resolve in an up down fashion, so I've got equal each side of the center division of the bar, and it resolves to this bar of eight steps, I need to give it. Well, in up mode or down mode, three octaves does it, because you get root, one, two, three, root, one, two, three, or in reverse, root, three, two, one, root, three, two, one, and you're, and you're cycling perfectly round and resolving to the, to the bar. But in up down mode, I've got to add four octaves, okay, to get that. And the reason is, that's 48, four twelves. The reason is is that it doesn't play the top note twice, so we're going to have now with four octaves available plus the original, we'll get root, one, two, three, and then for the next half of the bar, four, three, two, one, and back to the root. Root, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, root, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, and it will resolve to eight beats and cycle around equally like this. And if I speed that up a bit to like 120 <clears throat> and then go looking for my part which has gone off here. It moves around when you change the tempo so radically, right? Um, I'm going to lower this down because it's going to go up by four octaves so rather than it becomes a squeaky little note you can't hear when the audio has been rendered to web friendly quality. Mm -hmm. I've well, started at C2, then it'll go up to C, C2, C3, C4, C5, okay, C6, here we go. See, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, root 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1, root 1, 2, three, 4, 3, 2, 1, yeah, it's doing it, now it's resolving to the bar. Okay, so... That's kind of things you can do using the up down and, and up down key. That's the up key, the down key, and the up down key. Using a single note and utilizing the octave range here. I call it the octave range because it doesn't actually function for semitones in this mode. Yeah, it's simply every twelve that you add in there gives it the opportunity to step up another octave before it starts coming back down. Okay, and. Um, Everything's always in octaves. You can't say to it, go up a, a half, uh, you know, a semi. I can't say to it, like, go up, you know, seven semitones. If I set it like that, listen, and put it in up mode, it'll just go up and down. Yeah, it just plays the one note because I haven't given it a full octave range. It just plays bum, bum, bum every eighth at a 30 second in length for each bum, 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 yeah? But I put it up to an octave, 12. 12 semitones, yeah, and it will now have enough range to go to the first octave and play boom, 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 like this. Yeah? Okay. Now, this simple arpeggiation of a single note, dum, 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 of course, you're straight in uh, to your kind of craft worky stuff and all that. And if I copy that out to there and copy it out to there, and copy it out to there, so I've got four bars, yeah, and then copy my drum beat, I'm holding out Alt, by the way, and dragging this to make copies, yeah. Now, I've got the same pattern here repeated four times, but if I go into the third pattern, 
and I move my note up by a third. Yeah. Then I go into my fourth uh, and last pattern in this four bar loop and I bring it down a fifth from the third, which is this was the third we went up to. So I'm bringing it down by one, two, three, four, five to there. Okay. So now I have the root, then it play two bars of the root, then it plays a third for a bar, then it drops down a fifth. And the arpeggiator will be making it go up and down in octaves. And you get this, you kind of um, your kind of new order thing. It's not really in bass territory though, but if I was to highlight all of these and go into the editor, okay, it's only showing it's showing all the parts inside the four, all the notes inside the four parts I've highlighted. But I've got the part border on thing here, yeah. So it's only showing me the grid for the first bar that's selected. But I'll turn that off so it's showing the entire MIDI grid. And there's our four notes, one in each bar. That's the first bar, second bar, third bar, fourth bar. Okay. And um, if I grab the whole lot and drag this down to C1, which is more of a bass key. Okay. Now, all I've done is drag four notes down. Okay. Instead of having to circle four lots of 16, or four lots of eight rather, and drag those around, it's much easier to work with. And I get this. straight away we're into our craft worky new order that whole early synth days stuff you know and also at a little bit of a faster tempo that boom 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 is your kind of classic cheesy disco bass line you know sylvester you make me feel mighty real or whatever you know but you can see already we're getting into synth territory here in a classical sense because these are the kind of patterns that you find all through the history of synth music yeah okay so let me just um I won't actually delete these patterns. I'm going to just move them up here out of the way, um, like that, and uh, then go back to the beginning here. And I'm going to get the pencil tool and set my quantize to a whole bar and draw in another pattern, and then bring it back down to eighths or something like that. OK, so we've got a new fresh pattern here. Let's go inside that pattern. <clears throat> and put on our um, show part borders again so we can see the borders of the part we're working on, that one part. And oops, before I do that, I just want to reduce the loop range in here like that to a, just one bar so it cycles around just that one bar. Okay, we're back in the grid and we've done things showing what we can do with the arpeggiator in just a single note. Okay. And as you've noticed, everything, oh, by the way, there is this one other button. Let me just, this is set to length of one whole bar. I drop in a, a single note, I get a single note that's one bar in length. There is also this random button, and when I play that, it'll play the available octave range here, which let's say I set it to three octaves. It'll, it'll play back the root and the three available octaves in a random fashion, in, in whatever order it decides. Uh, it never does it the same, you know, so it's, I, I tend to never use that random, it's, it's pointless, I don't see the point of it myself. Okay, so that's what you can do with one note. But what if you wanted to make, and as I say, you'll notice that it's always going up by an octave. One octave, two octaves, three octaves, whether it goes up and then back to the beginning again, or whether it goes down, up and then down, or whether it goes up and down, or whatever, it's always an octave it's stepping up and down in octaves. You know, what if you want to like, uh, um, you, what if you want the distance between the notes that are being arpeggiated to be not an octave? You know, like what if you want it to be a fifth or a third or something? Well, this is what you need to start using multiple notes and uh, or chords because they're happening at the same time. And this is where we get into the whole thing of what the, originally the arpeggiator was for: taking a chord and playing back the component notes in that chord in an order rather than all at once.